Right, <clears throat> just doing it with 8 bits, unsigned numbers, no sign. So we have values from 0 all the way up to 255 with an 8 bit number. Okay, so the maximum number, if they ever ask you for that, you just say all the ones. And if you add all the column headings up, 255. Yeah, everyone happy with that? So that's unsigned numbers, or what we sometimes call just raw binary. But it gets more interesting when we want to record negative and positive numbers, which we call sign numbers. And we've got two methods. Sign and magnitude, which is the way we write numbers. So we put minus 5, as in minus 5. And the proper way, which is what the computer does, 2's complement, or 2's sync. Okay? Now, what we do is we designate the largest column heading as the sign bit. So if we're writing a positive number, we set the sign value to no. So we say right, no. That has a consequence. That means we can't have a number as big as 255. So the most the largest positive number is going to be a naught to say it's positive, followed by all the ones. So what number would that be? Yeah, one, 127 that would be. Okay. If we want to write down the largest negative number in sign and magnitude, all we've got to do is change the sign bit to a 1 and put all the 1s down. So that is plus 127 to minus 127. But we have a weird thing happen with sign and magnitude, which is why it's a bit odd. We can have this. So we can say a negative number of magnitude 0. So we have minus 0, which is a bit bonkers because it doesn't make no sense. You can't have minus 0. Okay. So we've got a representation that doesn't mean anything, which is not good. We don't want to waste bits. So we've got this other representation called two's complement. Now remember in the exam, they'll always say, if they give you a pattern of bits, they'll say what it represents. If they're being clever, they'll say, it represents just a pure binary number, unsigned, what is it? Then they might say, it represents sign of magnitude, what is it? They might say, it represents two's complement, what is it? And then they might say, it's an ASCII value, what is it? As a character. Okay, so they can combine all that together in one longish question, little marks for each bit. But two's complement, the way that the computer works, that allows it not to have to do subtraction because it can use two's complement and addition to do subtraction. Now again, if we're just reading numbers, so if we have this value, and we want to know what number it is, we can say, well hang on a minute, look at the sign bit, the sign bit is one, uh, is a naught, so it's positive. Okay, if you've got a positive number in two's complement or sign of magnitude, just read the number. So this would be 64, yeah? Two's complement exactly the same. Read it, oh, 64. So the numbers look the same when they're positive, which means the biggest positive number in two's complement must be plus 127, okay? If we've got a negative number, let's say we've got that, if that was sign of magnitude, all we've got to do is say, oh, it's a negative number, so it's minus 64. But in two's complement, we can't do that. We cannot read it directly. Well, there are methods for doing it, but we haven't looked at them. If you want to look, read it up. I don't want to confuse everybody with it. The standard process is to perform two's complement. So we say we've got a negative value. If we do two's complement on it, we will get a positive value. So we'll know what the value is. So what we do whenever we get something like this in two's complement, make a note, it started off negative, because that's the big mistake everyone makes. All we then do is flip all the bits. Now we're only doing this because we've got a negative value. Don't, just because it said two's complement in the question, flip all the bits and add one. You only do it if you've got a negative. So flip all your bits, then we do the add one. So you can, it's just adding one in binary. The quick way of doing that, start on the right hand side, look for the first zero, make it a one. <laughs> Everything you've gone past, they become zero. 
because that's just adding one in binary, that's what you do. So we've got that number. Okay? Uh, that's gone wrong. Uh, that would appear to be minus 64. Okay? If I've got this number, and this number you should start and recognise all the ones, same thing, that's minus one. All right, but to prove it, you've got to flip and add one. So I'll flip all the bits, add one. Well, well the first zero is there. So we end up with that. So it is minus one. But if I carelessly look at that and go, oh, it's the number one, I'll have got the question wrong. Because I didn't write down that I started off with a negative. Okay? So if I've got this number, just another one, uh, let's put a couple of notes in. I don't know what number it is. And again, I'm going to flip and add one because the sign bit is one and I'm looking at a two's complement value. So flip, 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 flip. I'm not going to keep saying flip. Look for the one. So I've ended up with that number. It was negative. So it's negative 16 plus 4, 24. Uh, 28 or 29. Okay. Have I added it all wrong? Yeah. Oh, yes. Have I? Yeah, 16 plus 8? 24. It's 24. Plus 4? 28. Plus 1? Uh, 28 plus 1 is 31? I know. Oh, sorry, I didn't see the 2. Yeah, it's 30. <laughs> That's all on tape, Callum. <laughs> right, so that's if we've got a binary representation and we're told it's two's complement. Right, what if we want to write down what <coughs> minus, minus 12 is in two's complement? Again, I can't write it down directly, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to write down what plus 12 is which is easy to write down. So sine bit of naught, which means it's positive. Write down 12. I'll do it myself, Carl. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you get 12. Right, we want the negative, so we do two's complement on it. So we just go one, one, no, no, one, 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 and add one. So from the right hand side, look for the first zero. Make it a one. Everything we went past, revert back to zero. Don't do it to the rest of it. So that is minus 12 in two's complement. As simple as that. Okay, so whenever you're dealing with two's complement, you only go into flip and add mode if you've got a negative number that you're messing about with. Okay, so if, you, if you've got a decimal number to write in two's complement and it's negative, write down the positive one, flip and add. If you've got to do in two's complement, and this is what students mess up, because they've heard the word two's complement, it's gone right down six in two's complement. And they go, right, okay. Six, that's easy, put six down. Right, flip and add. No, that's it, that is positive six in two's complement. It's exactly the same as the sign of magnitude. Now the benefit we get with using two's complement, we get rid of the need for a subtraction unit in the arithmetic and logic unit, because we can just do addition, but we also get to represent one extra negative value. Just, that was for you, Richard, that definitely voice. Okay, we can represent one to eight. So if they ever ask what is the biggest negative value in two's complement, it is always sine bit of one, everything else zero. So we use that one that we wasted in sine of magnitude to represent <coughs> one bigger. So we get a range plus one to seven to minus one to eight. Two's complement. Obviously, that's with eight bits. Okay. If it was four bits, you could represent that, which would be minus eight to plus seven with four bits. That's why it's important that you make a decision when you're working, when you're programming, as to whether you want signed numbers or unsigned numbers. Sometimes, if you never need negative numbers, it might be more efficient to use unsigned numbers, depending on what you want to do. But you shouldn't really be doing arithmetic 
in general with unsigned numbers. Obviously we use those for character. So if I was to give you, just as a quick test, if I was to give you this, and I said, what ASCII value does it represent, what would you say? Right, that's the, the number, the ASCII number, what character does it represent? Capital A is what? Capital A is 65. Right, so I'm going to be dumbass about it. And I'm just going to like, I can't remember the alphabet, so I'm going to write it down. And I'm going to say 66, 67, 68. So it must be capital D. So if that was, we were told that was a character held in ASCII, we'd say capital D. How could I make it a little d? What would I change? Like the... Um, the sixth bit across, or one instead of zero. That one, yeah. yeah. Bit five, or the 32 bit. Yeah, if we toggle that value, we flip between upper and lower case. What are the numbers that we've got to remember for asking? So 65 is capital A. 97 is little a, well done. What's uh, zero? The digit zero. It's not zero, no, 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 no. That's the null character that we used to use for terminating strings. Is that when you've got the 128 bit as a one, and the 16 bit as a one, and the, eight, and the lower nibble is zero? No. You'd have. <coughs> that. That represents zero, the digit zero. It's quite clever because if I want to represent the digit one, I do that. So if I set the upper nibble to that value in ASCII, this represents the actual number value of a digit. Okay, so the numbers you've got to remember, the digit zero is 48. And I, I, arguably, you don't re need to remember both A's because one's just 32 different to the other one. Okay.